Hello everyone, just like human brain, which is used to store data. Same like this in computers, memory is used to store data. Different kinds of memories are used in computers. Today we are going to discuss one of them, which is a ROM. ROM stands for read only memory, is a type of electronic storage medium that stores data permanently, which cannot be deleted or modified. Unlike RAM, ROM is non-volatile. That means even after you turn off your computer, contents of ROM will not be removed. Basically, ROM contains the primary instructions that allow a computer to start up each time it is turned on. Almost every computer contains a small amount of ROM that includes boot up firmware of the computer, which is also called BIOS. This firmware consists of code that tells the computer what to do when it boots up, like loading the operating system into the RAM or running hardware diagnostics. Alright, let's get into its technical details. ROM plays a critical role in starting up your computer. So what exactly happens when you press the power button? Your computer screen doesn't appear instantly. It takes some time to appear because there are startup instructions stored in the ROM which are required to start up your computer during the booting process. As I stated before, BIOS program which is also stored in the ROM wakes up and checks various components of your computer to make sure they all are present and functioning properly. This process is called power on self-test. While this is happening, you will start hearing sounds from your computer such as hard drive starts spinning and different lights start flashing. Once this test is completed, CPU takes over and starts launching the operating system that allows you to open your computer. Alright, ROM is not only used in computer's motherboard, it is also used in video game consoles, calculators, laser printers, microwave, washing machines, smartphones and so on. Manufacturers of ROM stores the program into the ROM at the time of manufacturing. After this, content of the ROM cannot be altered, which means you cannot reprogram, rewrite or erase its content later. However, there are some types of ROM where you can modify data. Let's talk about them. MROM Masked Read Only Memory It's the oldest type of ROM. It has become outdated, so it's not being used anywhere in the world. In this type of memory, data is stored at the time of manufacturing, so it is programmed during the manufacturing process and cannot be modified, reprogrammed or erased later. Example of MROM is a bootloader. PROM Programmable Read-Only Memory is a blank version of ROM. It is manufactured as blank memory and programmed after manufacturing. You can say that it is kept empty at the time of manufacturing. To store data onto a PROM chip, a special device is used called PROM Burner. Once PROM is programmed, data cannot be modified later so it is also known as one-time programmable device. It is used in mobile phones, video game consoles and medical devices. EP-ROM Erasable and Programmable Read-Only Memory is a type of ROM that can be reprogrammed and erased many times. Technique to erase data is very different. Ultraviolet light is passed around 40 minutes to erase data. So it retains its content until it is exposed to the ultraviolet light. You also need a P-ROM burner to reprogram the EP-ROM. It is used in microcontrollers, video cards and modems. Drawback of EP-ROM, when you use ultraviolet light to erase data, it deletes all the data from the chip. E-EP-ROM, Electrically Erasable and Programmable Read-Only Memory. This type of ROM can be erased and reprogrammed repeatedly up to 10,000 times. It is also known as Flash EEP-ROM because it is similar to flash memory. EEP-ROM can be erased and reprogrammed electrically without using ultraviolet light. The good thing is you can delete selected data from EEP-ROM. This was not possible in EEP-ROM because in EEP-ROM all the data gets deleted. This kind of memory is used for storing a small amount of data in computers and electronic devices such as digital camera and BIOS. 
Just keep in mind to delete data from EPROM and eEPROM. You need to take them out of the motherboard. All right, this wraps up today's video. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to stay tuned for more informative videos.